Alright, let's get started. This is a video that's going to uh, continue on talking about mixed strategy analysis in which we start talking about the mixed strategy algorithm and we actually figure out what is the optimal uh, ratio of what player one or player two should do in a given uh, mix-up situation. So right now I have Law to be my practice partner because he's going to give us our mix-up that we're going to be analyzing today, which is all based on his kind of ducking mix-ups. And so the first move that we have recorded is uh, his sweep, which comes in at a low, and if both things connect, it's going to, wall standing, it's going to do a total of 30 damage, so 22 plus 8. So we're going to take that number and record that in our uh, matrix that I'll show in just a second. And then our second action is his wall standing 2, which is obviously if we're standing, we're blocking it, but if we duck, we get launched in the air. It does 20 damage raw, and the highest I've seen has been 61, but I've been unable to find a source to find anything more than that. There has to be, uh, but they're just... that's what I found. Uh, you can use any number outside of that, but we're going to write down 61 for that option on hit. Um, and then, of course, for King, if we do actually properly block... Which is going to come in at 67 damage if they hit us uh, close range. Or a little safer is just back 1, 2 at 33 damage. And then for if we block this sweep... We're able to score a total of 52 damage on a block. So we're going to record those numbers. So again, uh, before we pull up kind of the numbers in our matrix, we're dealing with 67 um, for a proper hop kick punish. We're dealing with 61 if he hits us. Um, he scores 30 damage if he scores a sweep, and we are able to get 52 damage if we properly block it. So without further ado, I'll pull it back to the spreadsheet and give a little refresher of what we talked about last time. Alright, so we pulled up our worksheet that we worked on previously, and just as a refresher, anytime that you write one of these games, you need three things. You need the players. In this case, we have Law, who's going to be our player one, and then we also have King, who is our player two. So he's going to be responding to this mix-up. We need strategies in which we talked about we're doing the full crouch three as well as the wall standing two. And then King is going to respond accordingly uh, either with standing guard or crouching guard. And then finally our payoff matrices which we wrote down all the values of either dealing 67 damage, 61 damage, 30 or uh, 52, I believe, what we had. And uh, to continue on, we talked about the three different strategies of either having a high mid mix up, in which we can see standing is dominant, or the kind of pure strategy there. We have the uh, high low mix up, in which crouching is going to be the best option. But the one that we're going to analyze today is this mid low option in which we have the low, um, the mid of wall standing two and the low of the crouch dash three, um, or full crouch three here. And we're going to now identify that this is in fact a mixed strategy. And so what we have over here is to talk about how we write this mixed strategy algorithm. So I've written the full matrix here. Uh, so player one, is our law player and I'm gonna keep the medium there but uh, we have the wall standing two for medium and then the full crouch three for the low attack and then for King who is our player two he's just either going to be standing or crouching and I filled in the values this is a zero-sum game we have to show some incentive even for the defender uh, to do something. That's why we have to have the inverse values there. Uh, if you need a refresher, refer to the previous video. But now we need to start talking about the algorithm. We know that there is no equilibrium 
in which there's no dominant strategy for either player, and so there needs to be a mixed strategy that is occurring. There's a different mixed strategy for what king should be doing, and there's a different strategy for what law should be doing. And to help us find that, we need to find the utilization functions of our strategies. And so what we have over here is we have the utilization of standing and for crouching for player two. And to help player two decide of what is going to do, we need to evaluate player one's options. And to do that, we need to start breaking down these different functions. So the utilization of standing as a pure strategy is equal to the probability, which is denoted as this little p, of player one doing the mid strategy. So this is, the p is referring to player one going with the wall standing to option. And we take these values of wall standing of the 67, which is found right here. And then we also take the minus 30, which is found here. This one minus P is the probability of law doing a low attack compared to a high attack. But the first part of the function is all about if law does emit attack and we're standing, that's what happens. Uh, for the utilization of crouching, we still have the probability of law doing a mid attack, which is what we're going to be trying to solve for, with the minus 60 because we are looking at the crouch option. And then 1 minus P, so 1 minus the probability of doing mid, which in this case is going to be our low attack, multiplied by 52, which is king's payoff if uh, king is crouching and law does his low attack. And as we denoted up at the top, we set these equations equal to one another, and we are able to solve for P, which is the probability of law doing a, the mid variation. And I skipped the algebra here. I'm going to go into it a lot more in a generalized form in just a second. But we can see that law's probability of throwing mid should be approximately 39%. And so we can now replace this P with 39%. And thus solving that, we do 1 minus p. Law should be doing his low attack approximately 61% of the time. And so we now have solved Law's proper mix of if he should do his full crouch 3 or if he should do the wall standing 2 mix up. Because the wall standing 2 mix up is much more damaging for king uh, compared to the low attack, King wants to kind of stay away from that high damage, um, and so that enables Law to do his low attack much more frequently. So now that we've solved the probability of what Law should do in his mixed strategy, we now need to be able to solve for King. And so we're going to follow a lot of the same logic that we just covered, except basically the inverse. So instead of solving for P, now we are solving for Q. In order to do that, we need to look at the utilization functions of uh, doing a mid attack and of law doing his low attack, which we have denoted as here. And so once we start filling out a lot of these just kind of plug and chug equations, Q is denoting that the probability of king standing guard, while this one minus Q is denoting the probability of king crouching. And then we take this minus 67, which is now found on law side, and 61, which is found on law side to help find the utilization of mid. And then we're taking the 30 and the minus 52 to help us solve for the utilization of low. And again, once we set these two equations equal to each other and solve for Q, we come up with that the probability of king stand guarding should be approximately 53 or 54 percent of the time. And because 1 minus q is going to equal the probability of king crouching, we can now put in these values found on our matrix. 
So the probability of standing is approximately 54%, while crouching is going to be 46%. And so while it looks like King is close to that 50-50, which a lot of commentators and players say, oh, they put in a 50-50 mix-up situation. For King, yeah, it's close to that 50-50. But when we even start looking at law, we can clearly see that it's not a 50-50. Yeah, it's a 60-40. But once we even start adding in, if people don't know how to properly punish a certain situation. Uh, so for example, instead of that minus 67, if we do a minus 33, so what we're doing is we're changing, we're going to be changing this value, which I showed in the demonstration. If King, instead of doing a hop kick, if he does back one, if he does back plus one, two, it comes out to 33 damage as a punisher. So if we rewrite all of this box, and I'm not gonna show all the work, um, you can kind of do this as a little exercise and also to double check me. But once we change even just one box, it's going to change the entire outcome of what we just found. And by changing this one box, we now would have Law's equilibrium coming up to 46% and 54% respectively, while King is now going to be changing to 64% in which he'll stand and then 35 or 36% of crouching. So these are things that as soon as you kind of see someone's uh, behavior or habits, you're going to start adjusting your play. Now we won't get into Bayesian mixed strategies or conditional mixed strategies in this video. We're just talking about kind of an equilibrium point of a mixed strategy algorithm in this basic two by two. But I just want to point out the importance of if you see a certain mix-up strategy just by changing that one box, law is now closer to that 50-50 of, oh, well, King isn't punishing my wall standing two as much, and my payoff is extremely high of dealing 61 damage. And so because the risk isn't as high, I'm going to throw it out more. And then King, who's looking at it, who used to be close to that 50-50, is now saying, I need to stand more because of my punish being a little bit weaker um, and it incentivizes law to do this mid more, now I'm forced to stand more, uh, which makes me obviously more vulnerable to low attacks um, going forward. And that's the beauty of game theory of analysis. It isn't so much just looking at your own gameplay, but it's looking at what your opponent can do in response to me. So that's this situation perfectly solved. Uh, down here, I'm not gonna go over every little thing, but if you wanted to put this equation into Excel file, I've already kind of broken down all the math for you uh, to be able to solve everything, to solve for P and to solve for Q, um, and just showing all the algebra steps to go there. And so all you, what you really need to do is you need to solve for this one or to solve for this p uh, at this location, and then you just do one minus p to solve for the other mixed strategy for player one, and then you're going to follow a lot of the same logic to help find q for player two. In which, as soon as you find that, you do one minus q and throw it in there. So I'm going to kind of center these. If you want to pause the video, work through the math. Uh, I tried to use some color coding to help identify what is going on, but ultimately you are then able to put these equations that I've solved for the P and Q into an Excel file. And so as soon as you change one thing, uh, it changes everything at the same time and spits out an answer which will help you kind of solve a mix-up situation a lot faster. Uh, so with that, hopefully you learned something today. And make sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.